you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I want to speak to you tonight on the subject of forgiveness. Let me go ahead and give you the outline. Uh, There are outlines back there if you want to grab one or if you forgot one. Number one, sin exposed. Sin exposed. Number two, sin explained. All right? Uh, Sin explained. And number three, sin forgiven. Uh, Aren't you glad for the forgiveness of sin? Ah, Amen, folks. I tell you, I could not live another day uh, without the forgiveness of sin. And in John chapter 8, Jesus, uh, you know, if if you look at the first verse, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. And when we talk about the Mount of Olives, we all we always have to, uh, you know, remember that that was a place that he prayed. He frequently went to the Mount of Olives, and I hope you personally have a prayer place uh, yourself where you just get alone with God. Now, verse two, remember sin exposed. Now, early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came. One of the reasons there were a lot of folks there, uh, the Feast of the Tabernacles had just ended. Uh, Jesus, uh, uh, aren't you glad for the forgiveness of sin? Ah, amen, folks. I tell you, I could not live another day uh, without the forgiveness of sin. And in John chapter 8, uh, Jesus, uh, you know, if you, if you look at the first verse, but Jesus went to the Mount of of olives, and when we talk about the Mount of Olives, we all we always have to, uh, you know, remember that that was a place that he prayed. He frequently went to the Mount of Olives, and I hope you personally have a prayer place uh, yourself where you just get alone with God. Now, verse two, remember sin exposed. Now, early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. One of the reasons there were a lot of folks there, uh, the Feast of the Tabernacles had just ended. Uh, Jesus, uh, early in his ministry, was just beginning to be well-known in the region. Uh, People uh, had begun talking about him, and uh, and especially talking about his teaching. And you have to realize, folks, uh, he started at age 12, actually, in the uh, temple uh, there. And then it says... And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And, you you know, I I can't imagine being in the temple and you are teaching a lesson, a Bible lesson, and uh, someone just uh, brings a woman uh, in there and basically, you know, throws throws her in uh, what I would call the lion's den or a situation that probably uh, for her, you know, you know, is embarrassing, uh, is, you know, probably, you know, just a public display of not, not having, not, not thinking things through. And, and you could see where this would be a very, very awkward uh, situation. And it says, and when they had set her in the midst, which means not just dragging her in, uh, probably having to go through a crowd or having to go through people. And also, uh, she became the center of attention. And you know this woman did not want to be there. You know she was embarrassed to be there. uh, But they were making a point. They were making a point. And it says, uh, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. So, again, they, they talked to him as a teacher, but uh, certainly not as the Son of God. And really, when you think about this thing, folks, they were just trying to set him up. Okay? They were trying to set him up. They were trying to find reasons to arrest him, is what they were doing. And then the Bible says in verse 5, Now Moses, in the law, commanded us that we or that such should be stoned, but what do you say? And folks, we understand that uh, 
you know, the Bible says in Exodus uh, 20, and I believe it's the seventh commandment, that thou shalt not commit adultery. And, you know, the thing that, there was a couple of things uh, that stuck out in my mind. The first thing was, I really believe she was set up. Okay, I mean, you know, in the very act, I think they baited and, and some guy, uh, you know, decided, hey, let's, let's do this so that we can, uh, you know, trap Jesus. And the second thing that really stuck, and, and a lot of times people don't even think about this, where was the guy in all this? Okay, where's the guy? Because the Bible says in Leviticus, in, in Deuteronomy, the man and the woman that is caught in the very act of adultery are both to be put to death. Okay, read it, folks. It's serious stuff. All right? But they drag the woman in here, and you never hear about the guy. And that's one of the reasons I think the whole thing was a sham and a setup to make Jesus look bad. And do you know, also it says, uh, you know, the law back then said you had to have two witnesses. Because one witness could just lie about it. Okay, so, you know, uh, you know, I know they all wasn't there witnessing this is what I'm trying to say. So you look at this first five verses and you just, the whole thing is wrong. The whole thing is a setup. And, and, and Jesus is caught in the middle of all this. With the scribes and the Pharisees, folks, they love to judge people. And here's the deal about be, sin being exposed. People tend to enjoy exposing other people's sin, but they do not even want to deal with their own sin. And folks, we are all sinners. There is nobody in this building that hasn't sinned, okay? And, and a lot of times, I, I jotted this down, we tend to point out other people's sin to make us look better or for us to feel better about our own sin, okay? We want to look more spiritual than someone else. And here's what you have to understand. We are not as bad as people say we are sometimes, but also, we are not as good as people tend to think we are as times. Because, folks, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but God knows what's going on. And the whole deal with this, folks, Jesus knew exactly what was going on. He knew their motives. He knew what they were thinking. He knew that they were trying to trap him. He, he knew that they didn't like him. And really, the whole deal was uh, they were hoping he would mess up uh, and and uh, they could arrest him. And the deal is with that also, if he said, yes, we need to stone her, he would have seemed to be uh, not merciful, you know, and, and some of the people would just think he was very harsh and mean and didn't care about this lady. And if he doesn't do it, he was breaking the law, the law. And so, folks, in this setting and looking at it, it was almost a no-win situation for him. But folks, God knows what's going on. God knows, and Jesus knew. Matter of fact, God knows our every thought, he knows our every action, and he knows our every motive, folks. And these folks' motive was not good. Folks, we truly need to just be concerned about our sin and not someone else's. Turn to James chapter 2. Look at James chapter 2 with me. James chapter 2, verse 10. James 2, 10 says, For whoever shall keep the whole law, yet stumble in one point, is guilty of all. And folks, we know there is nobody that keeps the whole law. Okay, nobody. I mean, we have all broken. And, and you know, I'm not saying we've broken all the Ten Commandments, but we have broken God's law. There's nobody that is... Uh, done it perfectly except Jesus Christ himself. And in, in, in that the irony in that they were trying to make Jesus look bad and he is the only one that had never sinned. Never sinned. Verse 11, for he who said do not commit adultery also said do not commit, do not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery but you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. And here's what we do. We judge people by how bad their sin is. But folks, sin is sin to God. Now the consequences are different. If I murder somebody or if I just have a bad thought, the consequences are 
totally different, but a sin is still sin. And, and, a lot, and, and a lot of times we, we look and, and we kind of judge sin. We, we say, well, I'm not that bad, or this one's not bad, or I do a lot of things right but that. And folks, uh, you know, sin is sin. Verse 12, so speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For, for judgment is without mercy to the one that has shown no mercy, and mercy triumphs over judgment. And again, I'm not condoning this lady's actions in any way, but if anyone has shown us mercy, folks, we ought to show mercy towards other, others. Jesus knew about this woman. Jesus knew that this day was coming up. Jesus knew uh, that, that part of this story is true. But I'm telling you, we as Christians, we should show people mercy because God has shown us mercy. It would be like you saying that you have no sin, and we know that's not true. That's not true. So we see sin exposed. The scribes and the Pharisees make a huge scene in the temple. Now look at verse 6. The second thing is sin explained. This they said, testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. And a lot of people question, well, what was he writing down? Okay? Uh, I've heard everything from some other names of people that had done this particular sin. Uh, but I truly believe what he was doing, he wasn't just ignoring them. He was giving them time to think about what they were doing. And folks, sometimes when you're caught off guard, be careful. Don't, don't just blurt something out, all right? I mean, this whole scene was just like, I'm, and, and if it happened here, I mean, if, I mean, literally, if this happened here and someone threw a lady right down here, I'm just telling you folks, uh, you know, we would need to stop. We would, uh, and I, I would really hope that we would even pray about this situation. Why, what is going on here? What, what is, what's, what's the truth about these things? And folks, we sometimes judge people by the situation and then say something that is inappropriate at that time. Okay? Because we don't know the story. Jesus did, but those in the building, those, you know, the, those around them that Jesus was teaching had no idea what was going on. And in verse 7 it says, So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Folks, I got news for you. Uh, Jesus never failed a test. They were testing him, and he never failed a test. We fail God, but he never failed a test. And Jesus seem to be ignoring their accusations. But folks, sometimes silence is golden. Okay, silence is golden. Your silence says more than what you say sometimes. And I truly believe part of the pause also was for, with Jesus, was there would be time so the Holy Spirit would start working in their lives. You say, Mike, how do you know that? Because you read the next few lines and you can see the Holy Spirit started working. Okay? Jesus was basically saying, if you were without this sin, then you cast the first stone. Okay? And, and these folks all at once, look what he says, then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. The silence. I mean, folks, Jesus could have said a lot of things. Jesus could have said, I know what you guys are doing. Okay, you're trying to trap me. You're trying to make me look bad. Okay, you set this whole deal up. I know you set this whole. He could have said a lot of things. Okay, but even in, in, in silence, he was saying a lot of things. He was giving the Holy Spirit time to work in their heart. And, and 
obviously what it talks about conscience, but it says being convicted. Being convicted. Folks, when we are convicted, all right, we need to understand it. We need to, uh, you know, realize that, you know, this, this is not right. This whole thing is not right. And it says, and went out one by one, beginning with the oldest. Why the oldest? Why? Because he is, because the old, older folks are spiritually mature, okay? The older folks have been down life's road. You know, they've been, they, they've been there, and, and they have much wisdom. So first, probably one of the older uh, gentlemen, or, or even ladies, went out. No, can you imagine this? Nobody's saying a word. Okay, with all this, you know, going on at first and, you know, breaking in and shoving her down and throwing her right in everything. I know everybody was just thinking, what is going on here? But the whole place got silence. And then one by one, they started leaving there. And the Bible says, and Jesus was left alone in the woman standing in the midst. Can you imagine? Again, folks, I don't think Jesus had to say anything. Her watching what had happened, and I'm sure there were still tears running down her face. She was thrown on the ground, and she probably still had dirt on her from them treating her like that. But it was just her and Jesus. Folks, you want to know the true things. You want to know your true motives. You want to know what Jesus really thinks. Just get in his presence. Get in his presence. Matthew 5. Go with me to Matthew 5, verse 27. Matthew 5, 27. The Bible says, You have heard that it was said uh, to those of old, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks on a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And folks, I'm telling you, we are talking about it, the thought process. See, nobody can know what you're thinking. But Jesus, in another teaching, sorry, another teaching setting, said the whole issue. He just was basically saying to every guy in there, listen, guys, your eyes have wondered before. Don't act like that has never happened to you. Don't act like you're some super spiritual person. And, and folks, that's the deal with the self-righteous, okay? Those people, they, they really think they are better than everyone else. And folks, I'm just telling you, uh, we are all sinners in the eyes of God. So sin was exposed and sin was explained, but the best part is sin is forgiven. Sin is forgiven. Look in verse 10. And it says in verse 10, uh, See, there we go. Uh, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accuser of yours? Where did they go? Ask her a question. Has no one condemned you? Well, why did no one condemn her after that? Because Jesus set the record straight. Jesus was saying you, that every one of you have sinned. All of us have sinned. Many of them had done this very sin. And I'm not saying committed adultery, but, you know, I mean, that, that is bad, folks. That is bad. It wrecks families. It re wrecks relationships. I've seen the damage that, that, that happened. But, again, he's saying, if you even thought this in your mind, you were guilty. And she said, no one, Lord. Isn't that amazing? She perceived there was something different about Jesus. Her word, Lord. Okay, she knew that uh, somehow this guy is either a prophet or, or, you know, not just a teacher of the law, but, but, you know, there was just something different about this man named Jesus. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Folks, I'm telling you, the Bible teaches us that when you ask for forgiveness of your sins and you are sincere in your repentance, God 
forgives you of your sin. Can you imagine the relief this woman had? Can you imagine what she was thrown into? And even though it, you know, she was there with Jesus alone, she didn't fear. She didn't stutter. Okay? I mean, she said, Lord. She called him Lord. She acknowledged him for who he was. And really what he was saying, listen, quit doing what you're doing. Go. Stop it. Okay? Stop what you're doing. You're better than this. There is forgiveness. You are sincere. You have a repentant heart, and I will forgive you. And folks, truly, when it comes to sin, folks, it just boils down to you and Jesus. Okay? You really don't have to do business with anyone else. Because see, even sometimes as spouses, we like to, you know, we like to pick out one another's sin and and try to tell you know each other what's wrong with the other person and folks all sin is a personal relationship okay all sin is is between you and god and i understand the marriage and i understand all that but folks we need to take care of ourselves and the rest will take care of everything else will be taken care of you know, what she was, you know what Jesus was saying to this woman? You are forgiven. You are forgiven. And folks, I believe she knew what she was doing was wrong. I don't think he really even had to uh, point that out to her because I believe conviction came all over her. Now let's look at Psalms 32. I want to show you the importance of forgiveness. Psalms 32. Psalm 32, I'll get there here in a second. Verse 1, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Blessed is happy. Happy is he whose sins are forgiven, whose sin is covered, covered by the blood of Jesus. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. There is forgiveness, okay? There is forgiveness, in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. Folks, when you are convicted, do something about it. Don't ignore it. Don't act like it's not happening. When you hear God and and he is telling you, man, what you do and what you're doing is wrong, do something about it. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. You can see uh, you know, uh, the, the pain and the hurt of unconfessed sin. Look at verse 5. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. You know First 1 John 9, I quote it all the time. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Look at Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Folks, God forgives us of our sin. God forgives us. Our sin is under the blood of Jesus Christ. Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 8. Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Aren't you glad He is merciful? Aren't you glad He is gracious? He gives us grace. How much grace do you need tonight? Folks, He's got it. He's got it. And it says, he will not always, uh, slow to anger, excuse me, slow to anger and abounding in mercy, he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. What if he truly did, according to what we do and and our sins? what, what, What if he didn't? I mean, folks, I'm just telling you, we are blessed. We are blessed because God forgives our sins nor punished us according to our iniquities. Truly, he, he is 
in the court of law saying, not guilty, not guilty. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy to those who fear him. Now here's the verse I wanted to get to. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Folks, I'm telling you another scripture in Psalms says he throws our sins into the depths of the sea. I don't know about you, but I tend to do this sometimes. I'll sin, and then I'll ask for forgiveness like at night. And then even during the night, I'll ask for forgiveness again. I felt so bad and so convicted about that that I asked for forgiveness again. Folks, I'm telling you, he forgave you the first time. He forgave you the first time. See, a lot of times in our human nature, we have trouble forgiving uh, other people's sin, forgiving for somebody that, that, that has done something wrong against us. And folks, we need to be like Jesus. We need to forgive ourselves also the first time. Nobody's perfect. Nobody does everything right. Nobody but Jesus himself. Verse 13, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear, fear him. Folks, God removes guilt. God removes sin. God forgives us of our sin. And we can start out every day fresh and anew. And one last scripture, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3. Philippians 3, verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself uh, to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Brethren, he's talking to Christians, okay? We haven't apprehended. We don't do everything right, folks. But God forgives us our sin. And uh, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And folks, it's, it's hard to forget sometimes the sin that we have in our own lives. It's hard to forgive ourselves. But if God has forgiven us, we need to forgive ourselves. And guess, guess who reminds you of that too? Guess who reminds you of all the sin that you do? Folks, it's Satan himself. It's the devil himself. He wants you to live in the past. He wants you to remember these things. And God says, man, I, I've forgiven. I've forgiven you. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead, verse 14, I press to the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. I press means I go forward. Do you realize you cannot change anything that happened today? Anything that's happened in your life it's called history. It's done. Whether it's a minute old or a or hundred uh, hours old, it's still the past. You can't change that. Okay? L if you've asked for forgiveness, you let it go. Let it go. And it says, for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. See, some people that here want to want to say, well, the prize is heaven. Well, no, folks, the, pri the prize is is heaven. That's the eternal prize. But he's talking about your life here and now. And if you can't forgive yourself, folks, you are not going to have the abundant life. You're not going to have that joy. Okay? And again, I'm not, I mean, sin is serious. I, I'm not trying to lighten the load. I'm trying to say, God forgives you. God forgives you. And the prize here, okay, the goal here is holiness. Right, yes, heavens, we're going to heaven as Christians, but we want to be more like Jesus in the here and now. Folks, I'm telling you, you can really release some people by forgiving them. You can really help some people by explaining, quit beating yourself up over this. You can really help some people uh, by showing people what Jesus would do. I still love the bracelets and I still wear it every once in a while. I, I, I like to wear a bracelet every day, but WWJD, what would Jesus do? And folks, if we could just get that in our head, if we could be like Jesus, this place would be 
a better place. In this story, we find Jesus offering this woman mercy, grace, forgiveness, repentance, regeneration, and reconciliation. Think about all that he offered this woman. I'll say it again. Mercy, grace, forgiveness, repentance, regeneration, and reconciliation. The exact same thing he offers us when he calls us to salvation. Folks, that go and sin no more means everyone. He was saying that not just to that woman, even though they're not there. He's saying it to the whole world. Go and sin no more. Folks, that day, that woman, I believe with all my heart, found Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And folks, that is the best day. I mean, what started as the worst day of her life, Okay, the worst day of her life ended being the best day of her life because she recognized who Jesus was. Folks, don't get over being saved. Okay, don't ever get over being saved. It was the best day of your life. And if God can forgive uh, uh, us, we certainly need to forgive others. Father, thank you for this story. God, thank you for forgiveness. God, I really couldn't. I, I couldn't live another day without forgiveness. God, I thank you that our sin is thrown as far as the east is from the west. God, I thank you that uh, it can be buried in the depths of the sea. So God, I just pray every night, every night, every night, every night, we ask ourselves three questions. Am I right with God? Am I right with my fellow man? And am I, am I right with my family? And God, I pray that we can check three boxes. Yes, yes, and yes. God, thank you for the forgiveness of sin. Thank you that you show us what it means to truly forgive on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. God, thank you for your example in forgiveness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.